Hello, I'm the Amazing Atheist, and uh, this is my social studies journal. I had a social studies teacher when I was about 14, 15 years old, who every day, not every day, but every week, there would be a question on the board, and uh, we had to write 10 lines on that question. And uh, I guess towards the beginning of the journal, uh, I kind of answered the questions in, you know, a very direct manner. But as time went on, my answers to the questions became more and more esoteric. So I'm going to kind of start at the end and work my way back. And when it starts to get too normal, maybe I'll stop. Or I don't know, I'll just stop whenever I feel like this has gone on long enough. But I thought this might be an interesting insight into the young, developing mind of a wee Amazing Atheist back before all the formative shit had happened. Uh, this entry is from 6-15-2000. So this is it. The final journal entry of all time. Never again will I poison this book with my twisted philosophies. Never again shall you laugh uh -huh, or cry at the words that TJ dared to put in his journal. Never again will I try to convert you to spatulism. That's a religion that worships spatulas and the spatula god, Spatulon. Never again will I defeat axe-wielding pandas from Neptune with my amazing power of being able to shoot Pez out of my nostrils. Never more, never more, quoth the raven, never more. But who cares? I know I don't. I'm finally free from this prison that you call school. So until next year, watch the skies. And uh, just to troll him a little bit more on that last day, I put this entry upside down on the back of the last page of the notebook. Just to fuck with him. Because I'm a bad guy. This one's from 5 16 2000. When it's nice outside, I like to stay inside and watch TV, play video games, and use my horrific power to raise armies of zombie slaves that obey my every malicious command. By this time tomorrow, the world will be overrun with a legion of my undead warriors, and humanity will fall to its knees to worship me. Ha ha ha! Another fun activity is fishing for Big Reno, a fish so mean that it was named after the Attorney General. That was Janet Reno at the time. Uh, just in case you're too young or too stupid. I don't know. I'll get you, Big Reno. Someday. Someday. This one is from 5-11-2000. Uh, A good field trip would be to the Playboy Mansion. What? What? It's educational. Sex education is cool. I can't wait to meet all of them hot Playboy chicks with their bunny hats and all but it, all but it for some, all, I think I meant all be it, maybe. For some unfathomable reason, we weren't able to visit the Playboy Mansion. We should get to go to a magical place where the tea flows like tea and the birds only chirp the melody to the Jeopardy theme music. It's kind of superfluous, melody to the Jeopardy theme music. It really should just be... The melody to Jeopardy or the Jeopardy theme music. Whatever. I was young, damn it. And everyone is somebody special. You guessed it. Kansas. We heart Kansas. Kansas is a magical place. It's in 5-4-2000. If I could have an honest answer to any question that my diabolical mind could conceive, I would ask the simple question that has plagued man for centuries. Whatever happened to Mr. T? He was so strong, and he talked funny. And I saw him in a Pac-Man commercial and stuff, but why doesn't he make his intellectual thrillers like Rocky III anymore? If I had one question, I would ask Mr. T... I would ask why Mr. T is just some poor has-been begging people for steroid money. Why? 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 I must know. Still a valid question. You know, Mr. T doesn't wear his jewelry anymore. He said that uh, he saw all these people living in poverty and he realized like it was too ostentatious to have all that shit. 
I think he just couldn't afford it anymore, personally. I don't plan to do anything but sit around watching Dragon Ball Z and overdosing on sugar by drinking 163.7 liters of Dr. Pepper and a milkshake. Only one milkshake? I'm far more gluttonous now. It is possible that I may actually get off my butt, yeah, and go do something that requires movement, but I sincerely doubt it. Oh wait, never mind, I forgot what was going to happen over break. My dad's coming to visit and I haven't seen him for two plus years, so that should be rather interesting. And by the way, I hope that I wrote what I was supposed to because I'm not even sure I wrote about the right topic. At least I'm honest. The most important invention of all time is the spatula. Yes, I know that it's not exactly a supercomputer, but without it, we'd have to flip pancakes with shutter, a fork. I admit that I may be biased. I spelled biased, B-Y-I-S-T. Since the spatula saved my life that one time. But I think that I could use that as an example of how helpful they are. They make great back scratchers and even better weapons. A spatula is actually a rather poor weapon. But I am right on the back scratcher point. That's very useful. <sighs> In conclusion, the planet Switzerland is a land of beauty and contrast. Yeah, sound conclusion. Very sound conclusion. The most courageous thing I've ever done was the time I swam in alligator-infested waters just because I felt like it, and it sucked. I didn't even get devoured. What a ripoff. Alligators are about as scary as little puppy dogs and just about as vicious. I hear crocodiles are meaner. Next time I want to be devoured, I'll swim in croc-infested waters. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, no. I better not. Wouldn't you like to know? I would donate it to someone who deserves it, like poor old Bill Gates. He could use it as toilet paper or tissues or something. I know what you're thinking, but TJ, Bill Gates already has billions of dollars. Well, that is not enough. I swear to my 16 gods, yeah, I had 16 back then. I've whittled it down to zero over time, that I will not rest until Bill Gates pass, passes. Oh, actually, it says passed. So I, I changed tense in the middle of the sentence. Sue me. It's artistic license. The one trillion dollar mark. He deserves it. He invented stuff. Therefore, he must be some kind of god sent from Cuba to steal our twisted, winged, demented, pony-shaped clovers. And the only way to stop him is to give him money. And why, you may ask? Because Bill Gates is really Martha Stewart wearing a William Shatner mask. I knew it. Well, it's a stupid question, because if I were Lincoln, I would have been so clueless that we probably would have lost the war in the first place, and I would have been executed for treason. But in the small chance that history doesn't change, then I would show no mercy to the southern pigs. I'd execute them all. Every last one of them would be shot, hung, beheaded, electrocuted, poisoned, beaten, and tortured for the remainder of their short lives. It may seem cruel and unusual to some, but for me, it's just another Tuesday. Street Fighter reference there for the astute. Not, not the good games, the bad movie. I am not the kind of person who revolts. But there was this one time back in 1873 that these alien life forms tried to conquer the earth through the use of poison grass, but it failed because grass is already poisonous. I revolted against that. Will that work? No? Okay. Then how about this? Next year, I plan to revolt against McDonald's for selling ground hippo in their burgers. But since they haven't done that yet, I haven't revolted. But when they do, I'll be ready. That won't work either? Okay, then. Well, I revolted against pie once. That won't do it? Oh, well. I guess I get an F. One more, and we're at the ten-minute mark. Once upon a... Really? I'm going to fuck up once upon a time? Once upon a time, there was a man named Bob. Bob was a stupid slob who wore his slippers inside out because he thought it gave him magical powers. One day, Bob used his magic to save me from a rabid Jerry Springer enthusiast who thought I was a transvestite. But Bob used his magic lasso and beat the nutritional supplements out of the Jerry Springer enthusiast without even wrinkling my dress. 
I was so grateful that I grew wings and flew to Venus, where I met a cannibal, who I thought was a pretty nice guy, but he ate me anyway. Sucks to be me. The end. And, um, there's a little illustration of Bob there, too. Bob's arms are much bigger than his legs. In fact, he has kind of feminine-looking feet. I don't know. Did you find that interesting? I guess you must have if you're still watching this shit after ten minutes. I'm the Amazing Atheist. Peace the fuck out.